the academic decathlon math section practice test number two we got i think it's 50 problems i think it's 50 problems 50 problems to do here uh this is the in-depth uh, we'll talk about it and I'll tell you whether you should be able to do these really fast. You should be able to do this one really fast. First thing we're going to do is we're going to separate them. And eight is a perfect cube. So it becomes two. Now, instead of simplifying this, we got to look at our answers or our choices, shall we say. Um, and so we need to be able to see, oh gosh, they, they simplified the coefficient, but they converted this to exponential form. So remember that the exponent goes in the numerator and the radical or the root goes in the denominator. So uh, that correct answer is going to be E. So uh, you got to know whether how much you need to simplify it. So in this problem, <clears throat> we're going to uh, substitute. We're going to use substitution. We're going to take this formula, and I'm going to solve for y. Um, we can add y to both sides and subtract 4. So we get 3x minus 4 equals y. And we'll take this value, and we'll plug it into this. We're also going to do, uh, we're going to rewrite 8x, <coughs> 8 to the x. Because 8 can be 2 cubed, as we saw in the problem before. So that can be written as 2 to the 3x. And then we're going to write that over um, 2 to the y. And we're going to substitute 3x minus 4 in for y. So we're going to substitute this value. And so we have 2 to the 3x minus 4. So the difference would be... Um, 1 over 2 to the negative fourth, and 1 over 2 to the negative fourth is 2 to the fourth. When we change the sign of the exponent, we change the location. <coughs> Sorry. So that goes into the numerator, and 2 to the fourth is equal to 16. So my answer is going to be D. Number three, um, let's see how we're going to do this. We'll chuck that. We'll take that. Uh, we got to simplify. So negative three minus three. Square root of four is two plus four rad two plus one. So negative three minus six plus four rad two plus one. So those are the constants. That's negative nine plus one is negative eight plus four rad two. And that gets us to E again. Um, number four. Number four is a word problem. A restaurant has a lunch combination special where you can choose one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert for a low, low price of $12.99. There are five different types of appetizers. So you have five. You have eight different entrees. And you have four different desserts. So this is a combination. So you're going to multiply 5 times 8 times 4. 40 times 4 is 160 different combinations. It's a combination problem. That is very typical in combination and, uh, what is it, combinations and, uh, I forget what the other probability thing is. Number five, let's solve it. First, we always remember we need to... Isolate first. All of my eighth graders remember that. So that gets us 10 equals 5 times the quantity absolute value, or 5 times the absolute value of x minus 2. Let's divide both sides by 5. 2 equals the absolute value of x minus 2. We're going to separate that into two things. Remember, what can this box equal? Inside, it could be either a positive 2 or a negative 2. So we say, okay, x minus 2 can equal 2, or x minus 2 can equal negative 2. Because if it equals negative 2 in here, it's going to pop out a positive 2. And now we solve. We get x equals 4. x can equal 
zero. And we can check those if you want, but your solution set is going to be zero four, and that's going to be D. If you have the time, which you probably won't in academic decathlon, you want to check your answers. And this, we got to be efficient as possible, as fast as possible. So we see that we have to simplify this exponent first. We can distribute that into the parentheses. This is the only time we can distribute across multiplication. We get two squared, a squared, b to the fourth times two when you have a power of a power. You multiply the exponents and then you have this. That's gonna be four a squared, b to the eighth times five a b to the negative third coefficients with coefficients like variables multiplying we are going to add their exponents like variables multiplying we're going to add their exponents so we get 20 a to the third b to the fifth or c number seven number seven we're going to factor this is a uh, difference of squares difference of perfect squares and so they're going to create uh, conjugates. We're going to take the square root of first, 4x squared minus 1, and producing conjugates. We're going to have these two. Most students would leave that. I wish that was one of the answers. But this is also the difference of two perfect squares. So we're going to break this into 2x minus 1, 2x plus 1, 4x squared plus 1, not the difference, the sum of squares, which cannot be simplified. So we get E. Number 8, I love this terminology they use, operate. Okay, I'm going to operate, a.k.a. simplify. So we will simplify. We have uh, addition. Across addition isn't going to do anything, so we're just adding like terms. We have, I'm going to write that down a little bit lower because I'm going to run out of space. So we have 4 thirds x cubed plus 3 halves x cubed plus rad 3x plus, we're going to simplify that to 2 rad 3x plus 7 halves minus 3. So we need a common denominator of 6 of 6, so that's going to give us 8 sixth x cubed. Uh, that's going to give us 9 x cubed, 9 6 x cubed. We can uh, combine like terms as a coefficient of 1, so that'll be 3 rad 3. And we have to find a common denominator of that. So that's going to be negative 6 halves, and that's going to 8 and 8 is 17. 6x to the third plus 3 rad 3 um, plus 1 half. So 17 6 x to the third rad, uh, plus 3 rad 3x three plus 1 half, which is a decimal value of 0 0.5. Which quadrant contains the minimum of uh, y equals negative 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. This is a parabola. And a parabola looks like this. But when a is less than, oh, no, no, less than, one, less than 0, and this is my a value, my a is negative 3, we know that it's going to be upside down. So, it doesn't have a minimum, it has a maximum. So this is a trick question. There is no minimum. There's only a maximum for number nine. The expression 512 times one half t gives the normal total number of players participating in a tennis tournament as a function of the number of rounds in the tournament. What does 512 represent in this expression? Um, T is most likely going to be the number of rounds. And uh, this is a decay, a decay or a growth. Uh, so I'm going to say that this is the number. Uh, you think there's 512? No, there aren't 500. There were initially 512 players. Yes, this is going to be the number of players. That makes the most logic sense. 
if x minus y minus z equals 12 and a plus 2b equals negative 4, what is this? We're going to move these around a little bit. We're going to get them with those like variables, 3a minus 6b. And then we're going to group. We're familiar with uh, factor by grouping. We're going to factor out a negative 5. We get x minus y minus z. And we're going to factor out a negative 3. And we get a minus uh, plus 2b. And now we can substitute. We will substitute. Uh, since x minus y minus z equals 12, we can plug that in for that value. And since a plus 2b equals negative 4, we're going to plug that in for that value. So this becomes negative 5 times 12 minus 3 times negative 4, which is negative 60 plus 12, which is negative 48. That would be b. Which of these expressions is equivalent? Oh, I like this. So uh, instead of distributing out, I would convert it to exponential form. So that's the, excuse me, the square root of 100 x to the fourth to the third power. Remember, the numerator is the power and the denominator is the root. So since we have uh, three of these, we know that one of them is going to get two of those will cancel with the root two. So we will get 100 x to the fourth times the square root of the 100 x to the fourth because we have two plus one equals three. So that would be multiplication of those two. So two of them would make one pop out and you'd have one left over and we get 100 x to the fourth. We're gonna break this into the square root of 100, square root of x to the fourth, which equals 10 times x squared, which gives us 1,000 x to the sixth. Remember, multiply like bases, we add their exponents. That would give us c. Number 13, find the solutions of the quadratic equation. Uh, I like setting it up equal to zero, so I'd subtract 6x. We get 3x squared minus 6x equals zero. I'm going to factor out a 3x. We get x minus 2. Now we're going to use the zero product rule, meaning one of these boxes must be equal to zero. So we set each one equal to zero. Divide by 3, x equals zero. Add 2 x equals 2. So those are my two solutions, and that would be b. So doing things this fast is super important. Being able to recognize the problem and being able to attack it. You're not mulling it over. You're not marinating. You see it. You know it. Speaking of seeing it and knowing it, you should be able to factor this. You know that's going to be 2x and x. You know that's going to be 1 and 1 because here are my first, produce my first, my last, produce my last. Those are prime numbers, so there's only a fair number of, there's only that thing. I know my signs are different and the bigger is positive. So I know my outside and inside is going to make my middle. That's why I have more positives. So that's positive, that's negative equals 0. And now we solve. We use the zero property. 2x minus 1 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. Add 1. Divide by 2. x equals 1 half. Minus 1 minus 1. x equals negative 1. So my solutions are negative 1, 1 half. Negative 1, 1 half would be A. Oh, I like this. Number 15, which one has the largest maximum? So maximum, yep, we know that it has to have a negative A value if it's going to be a maximum. So this is a negative A. That's going to be a negative A. That's going to be negative A. This gives us a maximum. Let's look at this other one. Also gives us a maximum. So that looks like it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3. So the maximum value would be 3, maximum height. Uh, this is going to be 0, 3. So they kind of tie, not kind of tie, they tie. This is in um, 
uh, vertex form. So that's going to be negative 3 comma 2. That's a height. So these D and E are higher than this. So we know it's not going to be that one. Uh, and then here is in regular standard form. So I need to find the vertex. And the way I find the vertex, the vertex is we find the axis of symmetry first. Find the vertex. Uh, I probably shouldn't be writing in red. Let's write Axis of symmetry, x equals the opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of negative 4 over 2 times negative 2. That's 4 over negative 4, which is negative 1. We're going to plug that value in. We're going to find f of negative 1. f of negative 1 equals negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 2. That's negative 2 times 1 plus 4 plus 2. That's negative 2 plus 6, which gives me a positive 4 value. So when x equals negative 1, that's 4. That's going to be its maximum value. So that's bigger than any of the other two. So I'm going to assume that that would be A. I would uh, have to do it also for C, um, opposite of B over 2A. Um, opposite of b over 2 times a, which is 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. And we get negative 1 times negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 3. So a is the answer. Uh, number 16, what is the slope of the line? Love it. So we'll put it in slope-intercept form. It's going to be the easiest. Negative 2y plus 2 equals 3x minus 3 minus 2. Negative 2y equals 3x minus 5. Divide by negative 2. And we get y equals negative 3 halves x plus 5 halves. We have a slope of negative 3 halves. You should be doing these that fast. Given A and B, find A minus 2B. So we have 3x squared plus x minus 4. That's A minus 2 times my B value, which is negative 2x squared minus x plus 1. We're going to distribute that and then combine them. So we'll get 3x squared plus x minus 4 plus 4x squared plus 2x minus 2. And now we can combine like terms. We have 7x squared plus 3x minus 6. 7x squared, that's going to be A. Solve the absolute value. Uh, it's less than. Remember, less than is and. Greater than would be an or. So we're going to separate it. We're going to remember we separate each of these into two statements. And we'll get x minus 3 is less than 15 and x minus 3 is greater than negative 15. Let's solve it. Plus 3, x is less than 18 and add 3, add 3, x is greater than negative 12. What does that look like? Negative 12, 0, 18. It looks like this, because you're going to have that, you're going to have this, and this would be my and. So it's going to be um, it's going to be b. It's greater than negative 12 and less than, and no equal sign. So that's b. 19, solve. We again, we're going to uh, set it equal to 0. I'm looking at my answers. So first of all, I'm going to set equal to 0, so you get... You're going to add 8 to both sides. So you get 2x squared minus 9x plus 8 equals 0. You wouldn't factor because we should notice our answers are in quadratic equation form. Quadratic equation is opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a equals 2, b equals negative 9, and c equals 8. So opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. 
we get 9 plus or minus square root of 81 minus 4 times 2 is 8, 64 all over 4, 9 plus or minus rad. 81 minus 64 is 17 over 4. Rad 17 is, uh, is already simplified. We can't simplify that. So I'm going to give A as the answer. Uh, what is the area in square centimeters of a right triangle that has 45 degree angle? So 45, 45, we know uh, that's going to be x rad uh, 2, x rad 2, and that's going to be x. Because um, that's 45, 45, hypotenuse, so that equals 16. So... Um, x rad 2 equals 16. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, yep. We're going to divide by rad 2, divide by rad 2. x equals 16 over rad 2. Um, we have to rationalize. We get 16 rad 2 over 2 simplifies to 8 rad 2. That's going to be one of my legs. So uh, that's going to equal... Um, ooh, now that's interesting. Why doesn't that equal just 16 rad 2? Hmm. That is interesting. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Legs are X. I knew that was wrong. So the legs are X and the hypotenuse is X rad 2. So if our hypotenuse is 16, that's why we solved. So X is going to be 8 rad 2. My bad. Got a little confused there. 8 rad 2. Now we need to find the area. So this is part 2 is area equals uh, one half base times height, one half uh, times the base, which is eight rad two times the other base, which is eight rad two, which equals one half times eight times eight is 64, rad two times rad two is two. These cancel and you're left with A equals 64. And a little mistake there, uh, 64. Centimeters squared, just uh, 45, 45, 90 triangles. The legs are X's and the hypotenuse is X rad 2. So be careful of that one. Sorry. Made a slight misstep. Uh, me has an average test score of 78% after five tests. So if you add up all of her tests, so we know that the average equals the sum divided by the number of tests. So if the average is 78, we want to find the sum and we did five. So we multiply it by five and we get five times 78 is 390. 390 is going to be the sum of all the five tests. And she wants her average to be at least 95. So we're going to have 390 plus one more test and that's going to be our sixth test, and we want it to be at least, at least 85%. So we're going to do this. We'll multiply both sides by 6, and we get 390 plus that test. It needs to be greater than or equal to 85 times 6 is 510. Let's minus the 390. And we get that test needs to be greater than or equal to, uh, what's that, 120? 120. And what do we know? She cannot obtain this goal with one more test. You can't score 120 on a test out of 100. That's a fun one. I like that one. The volume of an ice cube is 27 cubic centimeters. It's sitting in water where it's melting uniformly on all sides. After one minute, the top face of the ice cube is... 40 centimeters squared. So that area on the top of the ice cube 
is four centimeters squared. So if it's a cube, we know that this times this has to be, X's have to be the same. So X squared equals four centimeters squared. So we take the square root and you get X equals two centimeters. So that's two centimeters. That volume then for that ice cube would be eight centimeters cubed because volume equals side cubed. Um, so the volume of the initial one was 27. So we're going to take the cube root and we get three equals three centimeters. So we went from three centimeters to two centimeters. We went from 27 to eight in volume. What is the difference in volume? 27 minus eight gives us 19 cubic centimeters. That's a good one also. All of these are good. These are really, really good. If you want to be proficient in Algebra 1, you kind of need to know how to do all this. This is pretty straightforward. We're going to use Pythagorean Theorem. The square of each of the legs should equal the square of the hypotenuse. 81 plus x squared equals 144 minus 81. 81 gives us x squared equals... 63 square root square root x equals we can break that into rad 9 rad 7 or 3 rad 7 which is a number 24 almost halfway there the vertices of triangle abc are a is 2 comma 1 b is 3 comma 4 and c is 1 comma 3 if triangle abc is translated one unit down, that's the y-axis, and three units to the left, that's the x-axis, create triangle DEF. What are the coordinates? Well, A is 2 comma 1, B is 3 comma 4, C is 1 comma 3. Uh, the translation is going to be x comma y, and it translates uh, three units to the left on the x, which would be x minus 3, one unit down, which is minus 1 on the y-axis. So let's translate those to D, E, and F. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus 1 is 3. And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. So uh, you have negative 1, 0. That would be D. That one... We probably could have just done one point since no point, oh, they, no, no point replicated. So uh, you probably only needed to do A. A square is circumscribed to circle. What is the ratio of the area of the circle? Circle, area of the circle to the area of the square. Um, we know that if the radius is going to be R, then the length of this is going to be r plus r or 2r. So area of the circle is going to be pi r squared. Area of the square is going to be 4r squared, 2r times 2r. Uh, the r's will cancel and we're left with pi over 4. So the ratio is going to be d. That's nice and easy. 26. A drawer contains 10 red socks. So uh, 10 red socks, 6 white socks, 4 blue socks. Without looking, you remove a sock and then return it. Very important. That means it's going to be independent, not dependent. A second sock is then removed without looking. What is the probability that the first sock is red and then the probability of the second sock being blue? So it's kind of P of R, then B, uh, P of R, times P of B, B uh, red, there are 10 out of 20, and blue socks are 4 out of 20. That's going to give us 40 out of 400, which gives us 1 tenth B. Probabilities, you got to like those. 27, find the inverse. So when we do the inverse, we're going to rewrite this equation, substituting y in for f of x, and when we take the inverse, we're going to flip. We're going to invert 
our x and y. So we rewrite it as x equals y plus 4 cubed minus 3. And now we're going to solve for y again. So we're going to try to get y by itself. We're going to add 3 first. We get x plus 3 equals the quantity y plus 4 divided by 3. We can't get into the y yet because it's being cubed. And guess who's here? Yes, Chewy. Chewbacca's here. So we can't get to that y without getting rid of the cube. So we're going to take the cube root of each side. So that gives us the cube root of x plus 3 equals y plus 4. Now we're going to minus 4 from both sides. That's outside of the cube. Minus 4 equals y. And then we can write it as y equals the cube root of x plus 3 minus 4. And that would be, and then instead of writing y, we could write f of x to the negative 1. I think it's to the negative, or f of negative 1, sorry, negative 1 equals the cube root of x plus 3 minus 4. That negative 4 is outside. So that answer is b. 28. Describe the transformation occurring. Uh, so we can look, this is in vertex form. So we know that the vertex, that's going to be the opposite of what we see. And that because it is y equals uh, a x minus h squared plus k. Um, and that would be our h and k. So our vertex would be h comma k. In this case, it would be 3 comma 4. So this is my x shift. This is my y shift. So I'm going to go right 3 and up 4. Horizontal shift, 3 units, no. 3 units right, yes. And a vertical shift, 4 units up. So we're going to say C. Being familiar with all these is going to determine the time that you're going to spend on each question. Find the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line through the point in parallel to this. That's not in slope-intercept form, so I can't find the slope just yet. So I'm going to turn this into slope-intercept form so I can find the slope for y equals negative 5x plus 4, divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4. y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 1. It's parallel, so it's going to have the same slope. Parallel lines have the same slope. And I need it in slope-intercept form. So there's a couple of things I can do. I can use point-slope form. What's the point I'm using? Negative 7, 2. Or I can put in y equals mx plus b and solve for b. So 2. Was it negative 2? It was negative 2. Mr. Mack didn't write that negative. That would have been a bad thing. My slope is negative 5 fourths. My x is negative 7 plus b. Come on. Negative 2 equals 35 fourths plus b minus 35 fourths minus 35 fourths. We're going to make this into fourths. That's negative 8. That's negative 43 fourths equals b. So my equation is going to be y equals negative 5 fourths x minus 43 fourths. Negative 5 fourths, and that's going to give me b. Yep, don't be afraid of fractions. Find the range of the function. So when we talk about range, remember we have domain comma range. So we're looking for my y values. What are all my y values in this parabola? The parabola is going to look like this. So I'm going to have a bottom range. It's going to have a, a minimum y value. So if I find the axis of symmetry or the vertex, and this is not in vertex form, so I'm going to have to find the axis of symmetry, which gives me an x value of opposite of b over 2a a x squared plus b x plus c where b is 6 so negative 6 times 2 times a which is 3 which is negative 6 over 6 so my x value is negative 1 so I found the axis of symmetry I'm going to plug negative 1 in so I'm going to find f of negative 1 
and that's 3 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 whoop, minus 9. And that is 3 times 1 minus 6 minus 9, 3 minus 6 minus 9, minus 3 minus 9, negative 12. So that negative 1, negative 12, it's going to be my low point, negative 1, negative 12. So all of my x values are going to be above negative 12. It will be equal to negative 12, but it will be greater than or equal to tw negative 12, which is C. Number 31. Which of the following functions describe? So let's start with A. So when x is greater than 2, my output is negative 2. When x is greater than negative 2, no. When x is greater, here's my x values going along here. Uh, so that would say that it, that it would be equal to negative 2. My negative output, or negative 2 would be down here. Ah, that's kind of funny. That looks like a negative 2. But it would be down here that way. So not A. Uh, X is less than negative 2. Or X is less than 2. My output is negative 2. Yep, that says that. I like that. And now let's check when X is greater than or equal to negative 2. So if we plug in 2 for X, we get 1. So 2, 1, yep, that's that point. Let's plug in another value greater than, let's plug in 3. 3 would be 0, so it is 3, 0, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say B. I'm not going to go any further. Love it. If I can find the answer early, it only helps us find all the zeros. When we find the zeros, we plug 0 in for Y, and we solve for it. So we love 0, we're going to factor negative 8, we get x squared minus 16, and then we can factor that, that's the difference of squares, so we're going to create conjugates. And now we have three numbers when multiplied equal 0. So we set each one equal to 0, well that can't happen, 8 negative 8 is a constant. We have 8 minus 4 equals 0, and we have x x minus 4 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. So x is going to equal 4, x is going to equal negative 4. Those would be considered my 0 values. Those are also my intercepts, my x-intercepts. Why? Because y equals 0. x-intercept, y always equals 0. Right in vertex form. Ooh, this is a crazy one. Right in vertex form. So we have this, 3x squared plus 9x. So this is going to really reach, and vertex form looks like this, remember. So I need a binomial square there. All right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to factor this, and I get x squared plus 3x, and now I'm going to complete the square. Complete the square. So we take half of my b value and square it. So half and then square gives us 9 fourths. Now, that is, so what I do to one side, I'm just, I'm not, I'm, I'm adding this to the right side. So I also have to add it to the left side. And I can't just, because I can't just plop it on the right to make that a binomial square, because this is going to become x plus 3 halves quantity squared, because now this is a binomial square. That's a binomial square. So I added this 9 fourths. So I have to do it to the other side, but I have to remember that I multiplied it by 3. So that's 27 fourths that I have to put to the other side. So add 27 fourths equals that. And now I'm going to combine these. That's negative uh, 28 fourths plus 27 fourths equals y, or y, that's y minus 1 fourth equals 3 times quantity x plus 3 halves quantity squared, and let's add the 1 fourth to move it and get y by itself. y equals 3 times the quantity x plus 3 halves quantity squared plus 1 fourth. That is a really, really good question. Is that d? I think that's d. That's a really good one. Students who get that, 
correct on the academic decathlon or your algebra one placement test, you're getting into honors geometry. Jeff paid $20 for an initial payment and then paid $5 per month thereafter. There's my fee, there's my times. So the function P of T equals 5T, I would have done months M plus 20. This is the fee, this is the monthly charge. What does P of six mean? Well, remember T is, um, no wonder they didn't use M for months. So it's number of months, total number of months, no, total dollar amount, ah, to what is P? Yeah, that's an output, remember. So that's the output, that's the amount paid after six months, yeah. Uh, F of X equals negative five X, fine F of negative one. So we're just plugging negative one in for X. We have a quantity, because we're only squaring the x, that's independent, that negative five is independent of it. So f of negative one equals negative five times one minus four, negative five minus four, negative nine. So f of negative one equals negative nine, and that would be d. On the home strength, no, we're only on 36. <laughs> A museum charges $4 for children, $12 for adults, there are half as many children as there are adults. The total ticket sales were 560. There are half as many children as adults. So if I take half the adults, that should equal the children because I my children are smaller, smaller. So I have to take half of the adults since that's the larger. We're gonna use the substitution. We're gonna substitute one half A in for C. So four times one half A plus 12A equals 560. That's two A plus 12A equals 560. That's 14A equals 560. Divide by 14, A equals 40. So there were 40 adults. Let's check, 40 adults. We don't have to, uh, now they need to buy. Yeah, I guess they could change, right? So let's plug it in, sorry. Let's use it. There are 40 adults. How many kids? 20 kids, does that coincide with B? Yeah. So they could give you uh, 30 children and 40 adults, give you the right adults, but wrong kids. So be careful of that. That would be mean-spirited, but it's okay. If they want you to balance speed with accuracy. Uh, solve the system. Uh, I'm gonna multiply the top by negative one. So we get negative X minus three Y equals nine. Remember we have to distribute it to everything to balance. And I'm just gonna bring that other equation. We're using elimination through addition. Cancels out my Y's. I'm left with seven X equals 21 divided by seven X equals three. And now I can't, x equals three, I have a, b, or c that it can be, so I'll plug it back into x plus three y equals negative nine, so three plus three y equals negative nine, minus three, minus three, three y equals negative 12, y equals negative four. So the point is three, negative four. Oh, I almost, almost circled e, that would be a. 38, R of T equals T squared minus one, find R of T plus two. So all we're doing is plugging this in for T. And when you get T squared minus one, T is T plus two quantity squared minus one. There's a binomial squared, T squared plus two AB, which is two times two times T minus one, oh, sorry, uh, plus two squared, minus one, so we get t squared plus four t plus four minus one. Remember our, remember our a plus b quantity squared equals a squared plus two a b plus b squared. We're using that template. So we get t squared plus four t plus three. That would be b. 
And the only difference, remember that other template, a minus b quantity squared is just going to be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So you can use that template. You should have that memorized. You should also, just saying, you should have the cube, sum of cubes and difference of cubes. Let's describe the following relationships. Remember, these are points. 2, negative 8, 3, negative 11, 4, negative 14. So increments are plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Increments are minus 3, minus 3, minus 3. So I have a slope of negative 3 over 1. So it's y equals negative 3x plus b. Or we can go backwards. Minus 1 takes me to 0. Minus 3 gives me to negative 2. And 0, negative 2 is my y-intercept because x equals 0. So I could easily write this equation like that. And that's going to be E. That is E. Lots of different ways to do that problem. Number 40, which of the following has the smallest minimum value? These are all in um, vertex form. Uh, all of my A's, these are my A's, are 1. My A value is 1, so I know it's going to be a positive. So I know that they're going to produce all minimum values. And this is vertex, so the vertex is negative 2, negative 3. Vertex is 2, 3. Vertex is 3, negative 2. Uh, vertex is negative 3, 2. And vertex is 2, negative 2. Now, smallest minimum value? I, I hate that. I hate that question. But we're talking about uh, the y value, minimum value, which is the y value. So which one is the lowest, uh, which has the smallest y value would be a, negative 3. Uh, that's not a great worded question. They could have done that better. Uh, this is a sequence problem. We know that uh, if we want the eighth term, we want a sub 8. So we're just going to plug 8 in, 8 minus 1, and we get 24 times 7. 24 times 7 is going to give me 28, 14, 168, D. Which of the following ordered pair is a solution? So we're just going to plug these in, and we got to plug them in a bunch of times. So uh, my y value, 2 squared plus 5, 1 less than negative 4 plus 5. Remember, we're squaring that, squaring only thing being squared is x. That negative is outside of it. Is 1 less than 1? No, that's false. Uh, negative 1 less than the opposite of negative 2 squared plus 5. Negative 1 less than uh, 4 plus 5. Negative 1 less than 1? That's true. We don't have to go any further. Moving on. 43. Uh, we're going to break up each of those. Uh, we should know that that's 2 rad 5. We should know our radical so fast. Divide by 2, you get x to the 4th. Divide by 2, you get y rad y, because there's only 1. 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over. And we get 2x to the 4th y, and then we put the rads back under. And that's going to be c. Doing these problems, this might be a record speed. Can I do these, all 50 problems, under 50 minutes? Less than a minute a problem, that would be nice. Uh, of the options provided, which is the smallest number that would increase the mean of both sets? So let's add up all those. 4.5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 6.5, that's 11. 11 is 22, that's 29 over 5, because there are 5 numbers, that gives us 5.8 as an average. Uh, 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 6 is 12, plus 8 is 20, plus 10 is 30. Also 5 numbers, gives us a mean of 6. So if we throw 5 in there, that's not bigger than 5.8 or 6. That's not bigger. 6 would not move the mean, it has to increase. So 6.5 would be our first number. Both of those would, 6.5 and 7, but it wants the smallest. So that would be 6.5 of the given. 
What is the slope of the line perpendicular to two, y equals two? Well, remember, this can be seen as this. So my slope equals zero and the perpendicular is the opposite reciprocal. So opposite would be negative zero reciprocal would be, uh, well, let's do you know, reciprocal, which is undefined. And we also know if we look at this, y equals two crosses the y-axis at two as a slope of zero. And if it's perpendicular, it's of course gonna have a slope of no slope or undefined perpendicular. Opposite reciprocal, 46, which of the following is irrational? So irrational is non-repeating and non-terminating, okay? So what is non-repeating and non-terminating? Uh, so that would be, uh, our, yeah, so that's rational. This is complete and utter what 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 is the Los Angeles Archdiocese, LA Archdiocese math department, whoever created this test? What is that? Are you trying to write this? Because this is nothing. What? Who is the math person? And you also can't write this. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. This is the only, only way to write a repeating. Oh, I mean, that's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. I'm not even gonna give it a green. I'm gonna give it a red. Uh, C is, because it is, uh, it doesn't repeat and it doesn't end. Non-repeating, non-terminating. So if we look at the square root of two, two square root, no numbers repeat and it keeps going on forever. Uh, and that's a rational number. That can be written as uh, a repeating number, and this is terminating. So my answer is C. That is just, that's bad. Come on. Come on, academic decathlon. In physics, work is defined by force times distance. F is the force applied over a distance of D. The carton is dragged across 40 meters, that's distance, with a force of 80 newtons, that's force, which are... Kilograms times meters divided by seconds squared. Okay, what well, calculation will give you the work done? Well, work is defined by force times distance, 40 times 80. Okay, uh, I guess we were looking to see that's meters. So that's fine, I mean, right? I don't know, that's, um, I maybe am looking at it too ignorantly to not see the complexity, but I, uh, that's how I saw it. Anna is measuring two cones. Given the base radius R and the height of H of the first cone, Anna computes its volume of cone. Volume of a cone equals one third big B times H, where the base shape is a circle pi R squared times the height. So that's the volume for both of those. Uh, so base radius and H, we're gonna get this formula for the first cone. First cone's gonna be this, but the second cone, oh, and, and it equals nine, okay? So nine equals one third pi r squared. Well, let's even do this. Pi r squared h. And now the second cone has a radius that is three times that. So volume equals one third pi radius squared h. And if the radius is three times, that's gonna be three r squared. So the volume equals one third pi. So volume equals one third pi nine r squared h. So what is the difference between these two is it's nine times as big. So that's nine times bigger. And if this is nine, so nine times nine is 81. So it's gonna be 81 cubic meters larger. That's another good question. Which of these is not equivalent? Uh, remember that's squared, so we're just gonna six over two, which is x to the third. That's x to the sixth times one half, which equals x to the third, 
This is x to the 2 plus 1, which is x to the 3rd. And this is uh, x to the 12 over 4, which equals x to the 3rd. So your answer is E, all of the above. And last, but not least, solve the system. So I wanted to do graphing. <laughs> I wanted to use graphing method, but that's just making it a little bit more. That would have been really fun, uh, but we're going to keep it simple. Y equals negative 2x plus 3. We're going to isolate and substitute. Where we see Y, we're going to plug in this. So where we see Y, we're going to plug that in for Y. And we get, in our last problem, x squared, instead of writing 2 times y, we're going to insert negative 2x plus 3 equals 6. We have x squared minus 4x plus 6 equals 6 minus 6. We get x squared minus 4x equals 0. We're going to factor. Whoa. We're going to factor an x out. We get x minus 4 equals 0. We're going to use the 0 property. We're going to set each one equal to 0. We get x equals 0, and we get x equals 4. Now, those are my x values. A lot of students would say 0 and 4. Too bad they don't give you 0 and 4. These are my x, so I have to plug it back into one of these equations, preferably y equals negative 2x plus 3. I'm going to find out what my y value is when x equals 0. So y equals negative 2 times 0 plus 3. y equals 3. So the point is 0, 3. Then I'm going to use that equation when my x is 4. So y equals negative 2 times 4 plus 3, which is negative 8 plus 3, which equals plus 3, which is negative 5. So we have the point. Uh, 4 comma negative 5. So those are my two points. And that would be E. Yes. All right. That is some good math right there. Good luck, academic decathletes, next weekend. Good luck, students using this to study for their Algebra 1 placement all of this information. Good luck to those students who are trying to get into Algebra 2. This is a good, um, this is a good uh, resource to practice to get into Honors Algebra 2.